I've had bullets. <laughs> Let me set this. I am scared that you're gonna cheat on me. Are you afraid of machetes? You might tell me, yeah. Okay, ask yourself a few questions. Number one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of Mario Vekas. As you saw, I was watching and observing the game of chess. No doubt in life, you heard many times that life and business is like a chessboard. And today I have the privilege to clarify this further for one simple reason. Life will serve you things you don't see. It. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know how it's going to reflect you. So ladies and gentlemen, join to me in today's beautiful Sydney with the world-renowned psychologist, a good friend of mine, Dr. Joe Isaac. Joe, thank you for finding time today to be with me. I have a few questions for you for all our listeners. Hello, listeners. Joe Isaac, what's the key? When we face the obstacles of fear, how we should be have? Fear is really nothing but a feeling of uncertainty that a person creates inside themselves using somebody else's marker. And I'll share with you that quick story. When I was little, my family were native Arabic speakers. So they used to scare me using a very, very interesting model. Whenever I do something not yet, they wanted me to straighten up. They would say, hey, if you don't do things right, we gotta bring the hundred. And I didn't know what the hundred is. But coming back to fear, I created this monster, absolutely very scary picture of something. I don't even know where I got that from. Later down the track in life, I actually realized that the hundred is just a number. But coming back to fear, just saying, I'm gonna bring you the hundred. I mean, now I'll be like very happy for to bring you 100, 100 bucks, 100 people, 100 supporters, 100 whatever it is, 100 cards of happiness. But I created in my head at that time that 100 monster. This is what fear is. Fear is not necessarily something that you have experienced. If I tell you, are you afraid of machetes? You might tell me, yeah, yes. And then I ask you a question. Have you ever been injured by one? You might tell me, no, I've had bullets, <laughs> yes, not machetes. Yes. But how do you know the fear of machetes is? Because using somebody else's reference point, their own experience and reflecting it on you. If you take fear from that model, then nothing will scare you until you actually investigate. That's the one. Now, how do we counter fear? Moving on from here, I got to ask myself. I read this book back in the day called Dale Carnegie one I personally consider to be the father of personal and professional development. How Not to Work. This is one of his not most worry, okay? popular books. And one of the things that he helps the people with to stop worrying, fear, all that stuff. He tells you, okay, ask yourself a few questions. Number one, whatever it is, let's say that you are scared that you might have an accident. Ask yourself, if I did have an accident, am I gonna die? Okay. Next question. Second question, am I likely to kick in and get back to life? That's the second question. The third question, what is the percentage and the commonality of having this accident in such time with such speed? So basically, this is in psychology what we call cognitive behavior therapy, yes. where you challenge your own fears by not saying in front of the mirror like some coaches say, oh, I stand in front of the mirror and say, I'm beautiful, I'm tall, and then you'll believe in it. No, no, no. Ask yourself the question to get your mind thinking action such as I'm afraid of this how can I stop that fear what can I do to counter that so if we go back to the accident here how can I stop myself from having this accident okay I'm gonna select the car that is very safe two I'm gonna drive using the rules right three I might get a car with autopilot to the cameras and everything okay. and then so on you're triggering your brain away from that feeling of fear into an action that can prevent that once you tackle your brain from that angle fear disappears simultaneously I always say to the people don't spend too much effort trying to battle something. Put something else that substitutes it, like a cup. If you put the air in, it's empty. When we say it's empty, it's got air inside, right? Yes. When you put water in, what happens? The air simultaneously leaves. Yes. So this is what I'm saying. Instead of trying to focus on stopping the fear, ask yourself, what can I do to fix that? The action comes in, the fear comes out. Dr. Joe, I have another question for you. I saw on your TikTok account, it says something very clearly, 
very shortly, very powerfully, 20, 30 seconds. Yes. We as a humans, we love to give somebody something. So basically you give the gift, you give the cake, you buy the present and everything else. However, Dr. Joe Isaac said that most valuable commodity in life and in a business is time. Why is the time most precious gift? Do you can give anybody? Your time varies your life. Think about time as life. Find me the most powerful person, most rich in the world. They can control everything. Yes, they can control the time. Nobody can control the time. That's why it's so valuable. And that moment that you lose, now one minute later, you can never be won. If you lost some money, you can make some money. If you lost a partner, you can find another one. Everything can be compensated. But time only goes in one direction, and that direction is equal to your life. And your life is the most valuable thing as a human life on this planet. Every single segment of it, that second, when you spend it with someone, you are giving them your life. Even if you're just hugging them. Yeah. And we know sanitizer, so yes. we are going to say it. And for the last, when we fail in life and we become more successful or any event happened to us, there's a saying that we suffer more in our imagination than in reality. Is that true? Absolutely. That people create things that don't exist at all. It's only alive in their head with so many relationships. So you have a partner, I'm not going to say a man or a woman, yeah? and they live in that mindset, okay, you're a cheater. You cheated on me. Um, or, I'm scared that you're going to cheat on me. They have no history of cheating. They have no history of cheating, but they have been affected so much by their friends that they have heard so many compelling stories that their partners cheated on them. They took that as a reference point, and now I'm scared that he's going to cheat on me or she's going to cheat on me. And I live in that, which is created right here in the head. So if I see you talking to a woman on the street, now my perception is going to be aligned with what I have built already in my mind. So now you're talking to a woman, I think you're about to cheat. Why? Because it matches what I have in mind now that I'm so scared that you're going to cheat. That's how it works.